and welcome back to another video and today we're uh, reading a uh, one big uh no pun intended bigfoot story and i uh i thought it would be interesting but yeah like subscribe turn on notifications and i uh, let us uh get into the bigfoot story I spent 10 years of my youth homeless drifting across Canada, hitchhiking and riding freight trains across every uh, place. I never knew where I wanted to call home, so I just traveled this beautiful country to see which places I liked best. I have many years of experience with trapping and trapping and wilder trapping wilderness revival. So being standard in places has never been an issue for me. The particular story happened in summer of 2013. I was hitchhiking out of Williams Lake because uh, uh, Williams Lake, BC. But it was getting late and uh, I was having a hard time getting picked up in a small sh shoulder at an edge of town until one man pulled over and said, I can't drive you very far, but there's a road side rest stop a few kilometers down the highway the highway and uh yeah um i'm just gonna say something before uh we continue this story very uh very very creepy situation hitchhikers i i don't pick up i wouldn't pick up a hitchhiker but i mean that's just me personally but uh yeah i i guess i can't say anything um but uh yeah but, uh, yeah, let's continue with our story down the highway, and I think you might have better luck there. I agreed. The man, uh, drove me a few kilometers down the highway, and, uh, yeah, driver drives me to the rest stop, and from there I pull out my car sign that says East in a bold black drive and in Sharpie. I stood there for a couple of hours to no avail until it finally got dark, and a bit a bibulous, my bad, a bibulously, your chances of being picked up at night are very slim. I decided to hike off in the woods and set off a tarp and a sleeping bag. My man, my plan was to sleep through the night, and in the morning I would walk back to the highway and try again. So there I go, flashlight in hand, walking into the bush off the highway. I have always had a hard time sleeping with trucks and big rigs, so I hiked about 200 to 250 meters into a bush off the highway so that some of the sound and traffic wouldn't be deafening, and I set up my tarp in an A-frame kind of, kind of a pattern area between two trees, uh, so basically his little campsites between two trees over a tight line of uh, parkour and pinned down with tent legs. There had been my my go-ahead shelter for many years. It's around 11 p.m. No pitch black. It's pitch black outside. I didn't bother to get a fire firewood because I was exhausted around 11 p.m. Now pitch black outside. I didn't uh, bother to get any wood. Uh, from walking up, all all day with thirty uh, ba with a thirty pound backpack, I crawled into my sleeping bag, and I was out like a light. In the middle of the night, uh, I woke up to a tree branch cracking all around me. Big branches, whatever it was, it was big. I heard heavy panting, breathing, but I, the scary part was uh, that a human breathe. It was human breathing, and very close, right outside my tarp. I thought it might have been a bear, but a human. But it was human-like breathing, uh, and it was also super unlikely. It would any, it would be anywhere deliberate trying to mess mess with me. And there were no cars parked at the roadside, turning parking lots earlier in the night. When I returned into the woods, I am positive nobody saw me. I was paralyzed with fear, laying perfectly still, holding my knife, my flashlight turned off. Then the next thing I know, a huge log gets thrown at uh, my little building. Perhaps is my tent, and uh, yeah, I knew I was screwed at that moment. Higher tarp fell off me, screaming as loud as I could. I climbed out with my knife. It lit flashlight and whatever it was ran off into the bushes. I never got a good view, but whatever it was, it was very tall bushes being rattled and took off. Then I looked at a long uh, got th goat got thrown at me. I was 
away I missed by my head. It was missed by my head by a few inches, pinned at my tarp uh, it, it, into the dirt below. It was about eight feet long, maybe ten in diameter. I would have it would have killed me. I built a fire using whatever sticks were laying out around the small clearing where I had camp and kept looking all directions with my flashlight and was terrified. I figured it had a fire might might wore it off looking all directions with my flashlight and I was terrified. I figured it it ran off. Whatever it was just got cl a close encounter with it and at any rate I had no invention in staying long. I took apart my shelter, rolled it up, packed everything and get get the hell out of there. It took some serious muscle to move l uh, the log and get my tarp unstuck. Once I was packed up, I walked back and onto the highway, waited until someone picked me up and uh, felt safer there. Whatever through the log was, was no bear, and I know it was a human. It couldn't be a human. Well, whatever it is. I was scared that night. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Sorry for the background noise. We're working on my house. And, uh, yeah, that's very annoying. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe. And, uh, follow me on Twitter. Welcome back to another video on the channel. And today, we're doing alien Reddit stories. Because, uh, this is super fun. And, uh, it's better than reporting Pokemon news. Um, but, uh, yeah, in all seriousness, thank you guys for watching these videos. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, follow me on Twitch, um, even though I won't stream on there, and, uh, yeah, let's get right into this video, and, uh, yeah, alien stories, uh, Reddit, <laughs> so our first story, uh, takes place, actually, pretty recently, someone literally just posted this, uh, maybe, uh, a month ago, skated home one night, for, uh, from a friend's house, and watched a U- at watch a UFO move over my head. The light stopped at a point, continued moving in another direction, and proceeded to do um, to do this again, flying off into the distance. Went back to my friend's house the next day and told him, told all my buddies. They laughed at me, but his mom came and claimed she saw the same light the previous night around the same time. They stopped laughing quick. Um, it's all fun games to tell, uh, multiple people saw it, and your friends are bullying you and laughing at you, and, uh, yeah, it turns out, uh, it might be real. Once I saw a massive, soundless craft over in North London around 12 a.m., couldn't have been more than 4,000 meters up. Probably was a military helicopter, given that it, it was a, a pro approaching light, but it was a super cool experience. If, if you live near a military base, like, uh, near a military base, I imagine uh, the types of encounters increase. Also, during air shows times, uh, there will be plenty of odd sounds and shapes in the sky. Um, that wasn't really an alien story, but uh, I'm just going off this Reddit, and, uh, know what, I'm, I'm counting it, because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, you, you never know, it could have been an alien, uh, breaking out of Area 51, even though Area 51 isn't even there, uh, but, uh, yeah, um, let's try to find, I'm gonna try more, try to find more, and, uh, yeah, um, know what, we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to, one. once I have, once I saw almost the entire night sky light up green, and the radio station immediately went uh, silent out uh, for a good few minutes in a while while driving. That was about a, as close as I got. Uh, one time when I was jogging, I saw uh, of th of those three alien toys, uh, whatever you want to call them, holding a giant dong that some someone had taped uh, to, to, to the hand of a bench. Um, that's not an alien story, but it's pretty hilarious. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, let's get into the next story. Sorry uh, if, it's, if that wasn't an alien story. They're hard to find on here for some reason, because uh, the subreddit is very annoying. But, uh, yeah. Let me try to find one more good story for you guys, and, uh, uh, know what maybe we can actually appreciate it i don't know if this will call qualify but uh a woman named 
uh, we'll call her Emily, ran for a, a mayor here in London for elections with one of her campaigns being uh, that the reason aliens have not visited Earth was due to them having a proper place on land and that if, if she was elected, she would build a dedicated land platform. Um, I'm, I mean, that sounds like something Florida would do, not London, but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. No offense to people from Florida. But uh, yeah, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, sub to the main channel, because we're almost at 120 subscribers. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching these Reddit videos. I love making them. And uh, yeah, uh, see you in the next one. Welcome back to another video on the channel, and today we're talking Reddit stories, and uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. Follow me on Twitch, sub to the main channel, subscribe here, leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, let's get straight into uh, another Reddit video. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a doctor Reddit story, and uh, uh, th this is a, this subreddit is doctors, what is the creepiest thing you've ever encountered while uh, on the job? Alright, so this story is six years ago. Verified, verifying death is always sad, but my friend tells me the funny story about how creepy his first verification of death was. This is not meant to disrespect anyone. Black humor is a, a huge part of doctors' uh, strain, strain strategies. He was on the night shift a few weeks ago into his first job as a qualified doctor, and he got a call for, from a award to say a lady has passed away and uh, expected death, hence he hadn't been called about her before. And he, and he could see, verify, and could not do the paperwork. It's a busy shift with lots of sick people to see first, so... He takes several hours to get there. He goes up and tells uh, him she's in a room, roommate in the door to roommate is slightly ajar and the room is dark now. She was in the side room, but most patients there were shared bays of six beds, so you can get into the habit of turning lights on it in his nervous haste to make sure he didn't look like he was... I look looks like where he slipped into the room armed only with a little pen parched the window was slightly open and he swears the blind rattled against against the sill and crept toward the bed the this tiny circle of light from the the torch picking out the rump with the hospital blanket only a very slim rise showing where she lay as she was an old tiny lady just skin and bone finally the lights plays over her face and he was too bit back and little screaming literally dropping the torch now to verify death the doctor has to listen for a heart and breath sound for two minutes while feeling a pulse check for a, a, a pulse reaction and to check for no no response to pain he flicked the torch uh Difficultly across her glaring eyes, forcing himself to shuffle close enough to the torch. First a check to response to pain, and then subtle shaking fingers on her throat, so close to furious grinning teeth to feel the, for a pulse to get his steth stethoscope under the col collar of her, grown under the blanket. He has to lean in even closer, almost nose to nose with her, unable to draw him get his glaze away from her and he has to stand like that for two minutes a second crawling away as he stares into a screaming face he always he, he says there's no way he would have heard a heart or a breath sound even if she had been alive all he could hear was his own racing heart in his ears on a loop in his head please don't let her move please don't let her move oh dear god don't move all right so uh, there's a the video right there leave a like subscribe turn on notifications if you haven't already follow me on twitch subscribe to the main channel and uh, yeah uh thank you guys for watching peace welcome back to another video today we're talking about near-death experiences 
Uh, and uh, these are Reddit stories, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of them, so I'm going to tell as many as I can. And uh, yeah, let's get into the video. Follow me on Twitch, subscribe to the main channel, subscribe here, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so uh, our first story is uh, about a 19-year-old girl. I was diagnosed with that Crohn's disease about two and a half years ago. Uh, a little over a year ago, my intestines burst out of my body began to give up when i was being was being transported from hospital to hospital the next 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 it was experience i will never forget um, all right so uh the next story is my body started to give up like i said the craziest part about it uh was that i did i didn't even care I knew knew by the look on the doctor's face and my crying parents that things weren't uh weren't good but at the, but at the time i just wanted to go to sleep i had been through so much pain that my body started to go into a dreamlike state when i when i when i did come to remind me of uh tripping on shrooms uh everything seemed so surreal and i felt warm and comfortable comfortable i only clearly remember bits and pieces of reality, but clearly I remember thinking back on my life in significant moments. That was story number two. I'm a 20 year old male who experienced a near death experience when my appendix, uh, re, 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 re turned i have no clue what that word is but something happened to the appendix your sounds worse though i was i was home alone at 4 a.m my appendix ex exploded uh from acute from uh accurate uh, appendix my uh ambulance uh, membership has expired and i gone uh, septic by the time i walked to the hospital because taxi driver said i was too sick uh, and they didn't want me me dying in the cab. On the plus side, I really got uh, first care of uh, projectile vomiting blood on uh, a, tra a, tr a trench nurse. My pain only lasted about two hours, so yeah, got off light other than, you know, which feels like you got ice in your veins and liquid and magma in your brain. It's been pretty good, so... Uh, it... It makes a pretty good story when drinking, though. Uh, and, uh, yeah. My next, the next story I'm b picking to pretty much is, uh, is we'll, we'll go, we'll do one, two more stories, okay? A week before this, I had surgery where they removed my, uh, I, I don't know what this is. It's a, it's, I'm gonna look it up, alright? I'm gonna look it up real quick and see right, the words ilium and, uh, yeah. Uh, continuing, uh, but, but no one ever told me that it could rip where they reattached it. Apparently the tissue was too damaged to hold, but I asked myself every day if that is the case. Couldn't they tell when they were looking in front of them? I don't know. I'm not a, a doctor. I, actually, this has affected me in an uh, interesting way. Ever since this experience, I am actually looking to relieve similar feeling. I have tried more shrooms, acid, and I continue to search. I also have openly admitted to being an an atheist. I was before I was before, but after this experience, I thought about uh, how I saw no God at the end of the tunnel. And after I I didn't care uh, what others thought uh, much about me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's gonna do it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications. These were near-death experiences. And, uh, yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video, uh, this Reddit video. Follow me on Twitch, subscribe, uh, to this channel and the main channel. Almost at 120 subs. And, uh, yeah, uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching. And, uh, check out this, uh, snipe. And, uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys. Welcome back to another video. And today we're talking about disturbing Reddit stories. And, yeah. Before we get into this, follow me on Twitch, uh, subscribe to me on the main channel, subscribe to me here, leave a like, turn on post notifications, let's get straight into this video. Alright, so the first story is, uh, this one right here. A few years ago, I was walking through the woods, off the beaten track a bit, and I smelt this really overpowering sweat smell. Being nosy, nosy I pulled back the undergrowth to take a look and found the dead body. The guy clearly... 
has been there for a while, wasn't looking great, all swollen and green and black with uh, uh, various runny bits. Local wildlife had also been dining well for a few weeks. I called called the police, told me, wait there by the body until they arrived. Being in the middle of nowhere, I took a while for them to arrive. It got dark, and I was just sat there in the dark with for a long with him for a long time. It turned out he had committed suicide for a long time afterwards. I had dreams about him, and he would walk to me and not in nice things, mainly about how he was angry and disturbed places he wanted to be kill himself, probably just um, imagine. A, a pretty disturbing time he th turns up dreams for probably time no doubt will be tonight after typing about two years ago i was driving home from a family reunion pretty late at night and the drive was about two hours i didn't stay at night because i had to get back to work for the following day most of the drive on the roads dense bushes trees either side real creepy ones you see a lot in movies anyways. I'd been driving about 45 minutes, and I was starting to get really tired. You know how sometimes suddenly you just become really tired out of nowhere? Well, yeah, uh, that happened to me. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to last. I didn't come across any places that I felt I could park safely. Anyway, after it became clear to me, I was to find pull-up tiredness wasn't a way I was somehow very uh, tired. I pulled over to the side of the road, grasped behind some bushes, tried to hide my car from anybody else who was going past uh, the road. weren't empty. I, I came across another car finally a few minutes or so. I made a mental note that, there, uh, that the time was 11.12 and fell asleep. Some time later, I awoke by scratching sound. I look at the clock, 11.50. The sound stopped after a few seconds. And because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around. Simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same noise at 12.40. This time, really free freaked me out because uh, the, the sound didn't stop. I thought it ran across my mind that I was just an animal in inspecting my car, but... Why Why return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in the rear view mirror and just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. Now, at that time, I thought it was damn hook killer. You know, the one scratched the couple's car then slaughtered the guy when he got investigated. Yeah, no, I'm good. I thought to myself, so I got the hell out of there. There was a bend no more than 100 yards up the road and I and as I came around there was a a car parked off the side of the road with a driver's side door open I, I slowly down just to look to see if anyone was there then I looked in the rear view mirror I didn't see anyone all of a sudden the guy comes sprinting around the corner and starts screaming at, at me shouting like Hey, hey, you get the out of my car. Now I, uh, now I noped, uh, out there, sped off. I never saw the guy again. Moral of the story, don't sleep outside deserted roads. That's gonna be it for the story, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate this, uh, but, uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and, uh, if you could, can you follow me on Twitch? Uh, I don't stream on there, but know what? You never know. And uh, follow me uh, on Twitch, like I said. TikTok. Uh, if you have any creepy stories yourself, go on uh, to my Reddit. And uh, yeah, uh, final thing is subscribe here. Like, turn on notifications, and also subscribe to the main channel. And uh, yeah, uh, send in your creepy stories if you want. Welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're on Reddit. You already know the vibes, and uh, we're talking about Karen stories. So yeah, before we get into this, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, follow me on uh, Reddit, uh, link in the description, follow me on Twitch, sub here, and uh, know what? Let's get straight into the video. Back in the day, Blockbuster, I would get screamed at all the time for telling people they still had movies out when they instead they returned it. 
I would live for the moment where they hastily run up to the Dropbox the next day, return the movie, and then book it out there as fast as they could. But our next story is this. I had a woman complaining to my boss because I could switch back and forth two languages when addressing coworkers, and she found it distressing and unprofessional, as she could not understand what I'm discussing as if I was were her business by manager, politely laughed at her, and told her we'd deliver her order to her house. Alright, so, um, why, I don't know why people take this so seriously. Uh, if people want to talk to each other in different languages so you don't understand, I don't see what the problem with that is. Um, mostly, they're probably discussing how you're crazy, which, that's probably what I would do, but know what, we move on to the next story. We have a, a pretty new Reddit story. Ma'am, there's nothing more I can do for you. I need to leave immediately. If you still have uh, concerns, please contact our corporate office. Alternatively, when I own my own business, we're done here. You have to complete lunatic to waste your time after that. The biggest problems I ever had were not as a manager. They were as an employee who worked retail, high school, and college. That's when you get all the crappy Karens. Indeed, because uh, when you're working retail and stuff, Karens think they can walk all over you just because you're a high school or a college student, which, yeah, you can do that, but it's probably not ideal, and it's not very uh, nice, because uh, they're also, let's say you're a grocery, you're working at a grocery store, uh, they can, like, destroy your stuff, and I would not do that to fast food workers because they can spit in your food. Not saying I would if I were to fast food, but you know what? If you really piss me off, I mean, you, you never know. But in all seriousness, uh, just treat people with respect. I mean, it's not that hard to do. And uh, yeah, uh, let, let's get into our final story. I actually wanted to end this video on uh, on, on the Karen's, um, not, not a story, but pretty much uh, how they were actually getting offended on a word Karen. Um, and... Uh, I'm going to talk about that real quick. I honestly think uh, if you're willing to do all this stuff a normal Karen does, or pretty much anything that's disrespectful or mean, um, I'm sorry, you kind of deserve to be called a Karen. I mean, if you're just annoyed at someone or having a bad day, um, one, don't bring it out on them, but two, you're probably not considered a Karen if you're having a one-time experience, but just don't bring it out on other people, because honestly, that that's probably a Karen story. <laughs> that's probably gonna end up on Reddit. But uh, yeah, um, I, I honestly don't really care if people get offended by Karen story on the the Karen definition or whatever, and how they're upset about it. I honestly don't understand why, but. You know what? Just don't be a Karen. And uh, yeah, that's going to end the video here. Like, subscribe, turn on post notifications if you like these videos. I like to make them. They're fun. So uh, yeah, um, more Reddit videos coming. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, peace. Oh yeah, follow me on Twitch. Use my Reddit. Uh, just put anything you want on there. Uh, it's fun to do. And uh, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, I'm out. Peace. Welcome back to another video today. We're talking about near-death experiences, uh, and uh, these are Reddit stories. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of them, so I'm gonna tell as many as I can. And uh, yeah, let's get into the video. Follow me on Twitch. Subscribe to the main channel. Subscribe here. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right. So uh, our first story is uh, about a 19-year-old girl. I was diagnosed with that Crohn's disease about two and a half years ago. Uh, a little over a year ago, my uh, intestines burst out of my body began to give up when i was being was being transported from hospital to hospital the next 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 it was experience i will never forget um all right so uh the next story is my body started to give up like i said the craziest part about it uh was that i did i didn't even care I knew knew by the look on the doctor's face and my crying parents that things weren't uh, weren't good, but at the, but at the time, I just wanted to go to sleep. I had been through so much pain that my body started to go into a dreamlike state. When I, when I, when I did come to remind me of uh tripping on shrooms, uh, everything seemed so surreal, and I felt warm and comfortable. Comfortable. I only clearly remember bits and pieces 
of reality, but clearly I remember thinking back on my life in significant moments. That was story number two. I'm a 20-year-old male who experienced a near-death experience when my appendix uh, re-returned. Re re I have no clue what that word is, but something happened to the appendix. Yours sounds worse, though. I was I was home alone at 4 a.m. My appendix e exploded uh, from acute, from uh, accurate uh, appendix. My uh, Ambulance uh, membership has expired, and I gone uh, septic by the time I walked to the hospital because taxi driver said I was too sick, uh, and they didn't want me me dying in the cab. On the plus side, I really got uh, first care of uh, projectile vomiting blood on uh, a tra a, tr a trench nurse. My pain only lasted about two hours, so yeah, got off light other than, you know, which feels like you got ice in your veins and liquid magma in your brain. It's been pretty good, so uh, it, it makes a pretty good story when drinking, though. Uh, and uh, yeah, my next, the next story I'm b picking to pretty much is, uh, is we'll, we'll go we'll do one two more stories okay a week before this i had surgery where they removed my uh i i don't know what this is it's a it's, i'm gonna look it up all right i'm gonna look it up real quick and see right, the words alien and uh yeah uh continuing uh but but no one ever told me that it could rip where they reattached it apparently the tissue was too damaged to hold but i asked myself every day if that is the case. Couldn't they tell when they were looking in front of them? I don't know. I'm not a, a doctor. I, actually, this has affected me in an uh, interesting way. Ever since this experience, I am actually looking to relieve similar feeling. I have tried more shrooms, acid, and I continue to search. I also have openly admitted to being an, an atheist. I was before. I was before. But after this experience, I thought about uh, how I saw no God at the end of the tunnel. And after I, I didn't care uh, what others thought uh, much about me. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications. These were near-death experiences. And uh, yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, this Reddit video, follow me on Twitch, subscribe uh, to this channel and the main channel, almost at 120 subs, and uh, yeah, uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching, and uh, check out this uh, snipe, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys. Welcome back to another video, and today we are actually watching, actually not watching, my bad, we are reading uh, Revenge Reddit Stories, my most favorite, the, the best stories that we could actually do and uh yeah um th these are my favorite stories to tell only because revenge is a sweet thing i like getting revenge and uh yeah if you guys do too like subscribe turn on notifications follow me on twitch subscribe to the main channel and uh yeah let's get straight into revenge stories all right so well, let's get straight into it a classmate's mom tried to get me expelled for quote-unquote selling drugs. Now they're being sued for embezzlement. I picked up a few uh, addictions in grade 10. Cigarettes uh, and some other drugs to uh, that weren't allowed. I was very depressed and I changed schools for my senior year to a small school where I knew most people I'm trying to start new n new with old friends and new people uh well there's some r rumors followed me i was still a heavy stoner and so were my friends at the school this got me some uh, unwanted attention some people don't care to hide it uh it became a problematic a few months into the school year when an announce announced announced letter uh was sent into the school claiming to be concerned for uh for my well-being saying i was going to school high smoking with my friends on breaks pretty true i managed to avoid punishment because there wasn't anything to be back to back it up and the principal and vice principal weren't very uh 
weren't happy about this uh, announcement because uh, then came a few more letters saying I was selling pills to younger kids, pressuring them into taking them. They claimed they had 12 plus kids' parents on the board to pull their kids if I wasn't expelled. My parents were pissed. Some of my teachers started treating me differently. The kids I had been uh, friends with distanced themselves. It because me to replace hard and ruined and ruined my grades. I made made it past it all. Uh, didn't get expelled past my courses and still had a few friends from school. Now on the uh, corrupt now there's corrupt lady. She sent letters to kids I knew saying everybody hated them. They should leave school, etc. We knew it was her in previous instances because of uh what whatsapp number she used to threaten some and uh and send letters written in the same word style got attributed to her she she is a psycho always uh meddling even in her younger daughter's uh crap who was 10 or 11 at the time keeping her kids from hanging out with other kids she doesn't like or her parents uh, she doesn't like. Today, I read an article about two years after facts saying there's non-profit in being sued by uh, uh, province. I live from a, a, a embezzlement ac accused of uh, stealing $4 million through a few shell corporations. Some programs they literally sold to themselves through another company, their own, and some of uh, there are other crap I don't want to get into. I feel bad for my daughter. She was chill when she was younger, but her mo her mom, I never did uh never did crap to her anybody at the school. I kept my head down and tried to deal with my demons, and she didn't let me. Uh, but karma it got her ass, so it's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the video. Uh. Or that's the Reddit story. Uh, karma is a sweet thing. I like karma. Revenge is nice. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this karma story. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and uh, yeah, follow me on Twitch and uh, follow the main channel. Almost at 120 subs. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe here. And uh, yeah, thank you.